Hello students, I am Dr. Ark Varma from the Department of Cognitive Science at the Indian Institute of Technology Kanpur and I would like to welcome you to the course The Psychology of Bilingualism and Multilingualism. This course basically tries to understand the mental processes that go behind understanding and learning two languages. Now you would know and if you look around you will appreciate that more and more people nowadays around ourselves speak not one but two and sometimes three or four or many other languages. It is interesting to note that while learning of a single language is a, almost a natural process which we uh, take for granted a lot of times, learning two languages or three languages at the, at the same time is an interesting uh, outcome and it basically uh, has a lot of consequences for the way how the conceptual structures, is, or structures are organized in the brain and so on. When you know two languages or you know three languages, typically what happens is that you will have two or three words for the same concept. Now this concept has to be mapped onto words of different languages and depending upon who you are speaking to or in what setting, you will use the word that is most appropriate in a given context. You might remember from my previous course in psycholinguistics that when we are talking to people, we do take care of three very important things. We take care of our listener, we take care of the setting and we take care of the content that we want to deliver. In the case of bilingualism and multilingualism, it becomes very important because we constantly shift or a lot of times we need to shift in order to uh, make the other person understand whatever is it is that we want to say. For example, in your school or in your occupational settings, you would probably be using uh, you know, a, a second language like English, but when you return home and you're talking to your parents or your siblings, you will switch back very conveniently to Hindi or uh, you know, whatever is your first language, say Tamil, Telugu, Bangla, Malayalam or so on. Interestingly, people are also capable of switching into or out of languages when they are talking to speakers knowing different languages. For example, while you're out to shop with your, uh, you know, mother and your uh, siblings, uh, you might encounter a school teacher or an, or an office colleague in the marketplace and you will notice that you almost nonchalantly shift into the second language, which is English in most cases uh, uh, or sometimes a different language. Now, this particular course, the psychology of bilingualism and multilingualism is basically going to help us understand the processes that A, help us acquire one or more languages, acquire two or more languages and B, help us understand how we use two or more languages, how we understand two or more languages and what are the consequences of knowing these many languages for our cognition. For example, as I said, uh, if you need to meet your communicational goals, if you need to be effective communicators, sometimes it is necessary that you know more than just a single language because you would say, for example, in my profession, you would need to understand the language of the students in the class, even though the language is uh, the uh, medium of education in English, it helps if you can understand or explain something, let's say in Hindi, to a student who does not uh, speak or understand English very well. So this course will be a 20, uh, 20 hours course, uh, course which will be structured in 40 lectures divided across 8 modules, eight, 8 modules or 8 weeks. We will begin with a brief introduction about the generic problem of uh, bilingualism and multilingualism. We will look at some of the sociopolitics, some of the situations that lead to bilingualism and multilingualism and then we will start with understanding bilingual language acquisition. In bilingual language acquisition, we will focus on how a kid who is being raised in let us say a multilingual environment uh, gets over the problem of mapping a single conceptual representation to multiple language tags and how does he pick up the phonetic system of two languages, the uh, concepts in two languages, the uh, accents in two languages and so on. Moving further, we will also talk about the critical period hypothesis and what is the correct age to learn a second or a third language and things like that. After that, we will go into language uh, comprehension where we will try and understand uh, how do people understand uh, when they are spoken to in two or more languages. Remember, 
understanding or comprehension is a lot about decoding the signal that somebody else is sending to you. If for production you had to map a single concept to two or three different languages that you know, you will have to reverse engineer whatever somebody is saying to reach the same conceptual representation whether you are being spoken to let us say in English or in Hindi. Moving further, we will talk about how people switch between two languages, what are the cognitive processes that uh, enable us uh, with that capability and we will also talk about some of the cognitive consequences of bilingualism and multilingualism. For example, whether it has any consequences for memory, whether it has any consequences for general cognition, whether it has any con consequences for let us say our abilities of executive processing and so on. I hope that this course will, will be able to inform you about the nuances of uh, you know being a bilingual or a multilingual. It will also inform you some of the uh, processes uh, that uh, will help you understand bilinguals or multilinguals better and maybe help you in some way in learning a second or a third language if you uh, so wish to do. Thank you so much.